White balancing with digital is easy, but how do you white balance with film? Welcome to The Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. I sound better in my head. When shooting color film, there are two basic types. There's daylight balanced, which is meant to be shot outdoors in 5,000 to 6,000 K lighting. The colors will come out correct in that situation. But if you go indoors to a tungsten lit room, then your images tend to come out very orange or yellow because the light is more orange and yellow. If you get a different film stock that is tungsten balanced, colors will come out correct in those tungsten lights, but if you go outside under daylight, everything will come out to blue. Now, tungsten film isn't exactly easy to find anymore, but I know a lot of people are going out there and finding uh, movie stock, which is mostly tungsten balanced. There are daylight balanced movie stocks, but if you're buying that sort of thing, be aware of what you're getting. So if you do want to use these under different lighting conditions, you need to know how to be able to white balance your film. It makes it easier to do it in camera than try to fix it later in post, either scanning or in the darkroom. So let me show you how you do that. You really want to use a filter. And there's one for each type of film for each type of lighting situation. So if you're shooting daylight film, but you're in a tungsten lit situation, you want to make the color more blue. In that case, an 80A filter will change the light balance to more similar to daylight. On the other hand, if you're shooting tungsten balanced film and you go outdoors, then you may want to use an 85B. These are very common in the movie industry just for that reason. So these simply go onto the front of your lens and you shoot away. You can get a variety of different types, gels, screw in, resin filters, whatever you like. They're very easy to find and not very expensive. There are uh, different grades of blue and orange. Um, this is the 80A, there's an 80B, C, D, uh, getting progressively lighter in blue. And then the warming filter, this is an 85B, there's also a C, and then just 85 and no letters. Again, it changes how deep that orange is. So let me show you the effects of each one under different lighting conditions to give you a better idea of how this works. So here I have a portrait set up, single strobe light here, uh, just a large reflector on the opposite side. Right now, the flash is set for a 5000 or 5500K setting. So I've got a daylight balanced film in the camera. So let's take a photograph as our baseline of film that matches the lighting. So this serves as a baseline. The next thing we're going to do is change the film stock to a tungsten balanced film under the same lighting conditions. And as you can see, it's far too blue because the light is much colder in color than the film stock is attuned for. So to correct this, we're going to use an 85B warming filter. Now, the filter blocks some of the light. Therefore, I've had to change the power of my strobe by 0.7 stops, so two thirds of a stop. I could change the settings on the camera, but I want to retain the same depth of field. So therefore, I'm going to leave my aperture the same. Changing the shutter speed would have no effect. So the power setting on the light would do that. If I were doing this on a landscape, changing the aperture or shutter speed would create the same thing. 
But as you can see, the colors now are much more natural than they were before. This is because it's correcting for the excess blue that the film is not ready for. Next, let's take a look at how a daylight balanced film works under tungsten light. So here I have gelled my light with a CTO or um, a color temperature orange filter. And that has simulated the flash as a tungsten light with daylight film. And as you can see, it is far too orange. So I need to cool that down. And to do that, I'm going to use the ADA filter. And as you can see, that corrects the color temperature for a um, daylight balanced film under a tungsten light source. Now the colors are not exactly perfect. And that's because you are trying to modify the um, excess blue or red in the color spectrum, but it's not the entire color spectrum. It's sort of like uh, using an LED or fluorescent with the wrong CRI, or color rendering index. And my own theory is that people who try to color grade to get that cinematic look are really trying to mimic what a um, tungsten film uh, corrected with an 85B filter in daylight or the other way around, a daylight filter corrected with an 80A under tungsten lighting uh, is trying to mimic because they're looking at how Hollywood is uh, using filters on the cameras to correct for the lighting and the film stock. That gives kind of an offish color in the shadows uh, and so I personally believe that's where that comes from, but you never know. Uh, but it's a very simple thing to do. Two filters will get you started, uh, depending on what kind of film stock you get. So if you're getting daylight films, such as Kodak Portra, um, or any kind of the daylight balanced movie stocks, then you may want to supplement with an ADA filter for tungsten light. On the other hand, if you're getting a tungsten balanced film stock, then you might just want to grab yourself an 85B in order to shoot outdoors without getting excessive blue. This will just help keep your uh, colors mostly neutral when you go to scan it or go to print in the darkroom without having to use excessive color correction in post. Might just make your life a little bit easier by just throwing that filter right on the lens. So, an easy quick tip for you and go out there have happy shooting thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe and if you're wanting to help support this channel then down in the description you can find a link to my website where you can get t-shirts or prints that you've seen on this channel